Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back working on the 3-2 Carrera, and you're probably wondering, wait, what are you doing in the engine bay? I thought we were all done back here. Well, we are done pretty much, but one of our Patreons sent me this little guy, and you're like, uh-huh, great, yeah, it's a black low cap. It goes on the nut here on the alternator pulley, and it's just another touch, just like the little yellow cap that's back there. So, Frank, thank you so much for sending this. How thoughtful was that? That was awesome. So let's go ahead and pop this guy on. It's gonna look killer. So it just pops over the nut, just like that. Boom. Doesn't that look great? So cool. Well, I just love these little details. They're so fun. All right, well, we actually do have quite a bit more work to do on the interior. So we can go ahead and shut this, which is kind of nice. And let's go ahead and get to the interior. I still have uh, some seat belts to put in. We talked about those seats. I have the center console, a bunch of different things to do. But before we actually get into the work, Heidi wants to go over the actual interior and introduce you to the guy who did the work on the interior. Well, with classic cars, we can sometimes run into challenges when it comes to sourcing things like engine parts, but as well with interior parts. We were given a couple of referrals to some places in California for the leather work for the seats and for the carpet. Now one of the things that I was interested in doing was finding out where we could get carpet at a reasonable price and in a reasonable time frame. So one of the first places I called said it was going to be six months until the carpet was available. So the other place said six weeks. We ran into some issues, you know there's COVID and it ended up being six months as well. So we did get everything. They did a beautiful job and the place that we went to is called World Upholstery and Trim. They are out of California. We will have information for these places that we're talking about in our description or in our comment section. The other thing that came up was it was a little bit hard to source the padding that goes into the seats. And we ended up finding a gentleman here locally. His, his company name is Interiors by Juan. And one of the things that he was able to do was actually build up the seats with foam himself and that was huge because it's really hard to source the foam interiors right now. We really enjoyed his work. He had quick turnaround time. His pricing was very reasonable and he did a fabulous job and we had seen several other cars that were done by him before we went to him. So we really sing his praises. He does a lot of work with Concourse cars and he has a wonderful shop and I really liked his turnaround time. So I just wanted to put that out there. We also are going to have a lot of parts that we did not use. We have our interior carpet from the car. We have Chad's interior carpet. We have Chad's seats. We have a steering wheel. So all of this stuff is the same burgundy color that we had. And if you are interested in any or all of them, please feel free to send us an email at the contact us at Heidi and Franny's garage.com and we will get you set up. We have a lot of little things to get done and a couple of kind of big things to get done. Well, let's start with some of the smaller things first. These back seats. So I know these things are kind of comical, huh? I think Porsche calls them emergency seating. They should stay up. When you push them up, there's a little red push over here that you can slide in that's supposed to lock the seat in. And it's not working on this one, spring's missing. And on this seat, it's missing all together. So I ordered some new parts for all of this and I'm gonna go ahead and install them and see if we can get these things to work properly. Looks like there's a screw here and then there's actually one on the back side as well. I'll go ahead and remove those and see if that gets us any closer to getting this pin out. Now also you can see that the pin doesn't quite go all the way over. That's because the seat is too far to the right as well. All right, screwdriver to the rescue here. Pull that, ah, there we go. Okay, so our whole mechanism pulled out, that's great. It's always great to have spare parts and this is our new pin for the other side. So we have our pin on this side, we're just missing our spring, but 
the threads tell me how to disassemble this thing. So it looks like this guy actually unscrews. There you go. That way you don't break it getting it off. That guy unscrewed. This should pull out the other side. Here's our new spring. And weirdly, it's just absolutely missing on this part. How strange is that? So this goes on here like that. Now, judging by the look of this thing and running inside that bore, I think I'm going to throw a little bit of grease on this as well. But it's going to go in here like this. There we go and we'll just screw our red cap on the other end. Okay, all better. That's the way it's supposed to be. And the cool part is that since we're missing a bunch of these pieces on the other side, now we know how it actually goes together and how to get this whole block out. All right, great. Let's go ahead and just reinstall it. There it goes. This rusty screw right here needs to be taken out and there should be a spacer behind this to push this that way. So let's go ahead and take that out. I actually have a brand new screw here and a new spacer. Work our new bolt into place. All right, that's that in. Well, that feels really good. Now back here, we need to adjust this guy so that it'll actually hold. There it goes. Snap-a-doodle. Now that it's in position, we can go ahead and tighten this guy up. With that guy tight. We'll go ahead and tighten the one on the other side. We can tighten our screw here on the back. All right, and that's our screw in the back done. Should be able to push this up and snap-a-doodle. There we go. All right, well that works great. So all we do is just push the seat back a little bit to release the pressure on the pin, pull the pin out. See, there we go. And the seat will come down and then to, to push it up into place, we just push it up and boom, it locks into place. And that's the way it should be. All right, let's go ahead and do the other side. It's just like this, although it's just missing a few more parts. But it's just like this. We'll go ahead and take it apart, grease it, put it all back together and get it all aligned. It's gonna be awesome. Next, I wanna tackle these seat belts in the back. I know these seats almost never get used, but they're just so horrible. So I wanna replace them. Now, originally, these are original and they have these retractors, which are a huge pain in the butt, barely work. And if you did have a child back here, like a 10 year old or something, I mean, they're never gonna use this. They're never gonna be able to get that thing out. So. It's kind of a mess. The other problem is this big old lump sits in here and it dents the top of the seat rest here and the seat below it, so that's no good either. Not to mention all the plastic here is all cracked and falling apart and it just looks awful. Look at that, see? All broken and cracked. That just looks terrible, huh? So this is my solution. So I got a set of replacements, but these are non-retractable replacements. They're just a you just have to adjust them manually. These seat belts would be for a much older car, so somewhere in the 70s before they added these silly things. But I think this is going to actually work out better. I can cinch them up, get them tight across, and I think they're going to look a lot better. All right, let's go ahead and get these out. It's a 17 millimeter bolt. We just need to pull it out. And the new seat belts go in the same way, nothing special. All right, here we go. That's so much better. We can tighten this up a bit and pull a bit of the slack out. Yeah, that's much better. And lay that down there. That way, when we put the seat down, it sits all the way down and it doesn't sit on the retractor on this side. And we can still use it. It's still a viable seat belt. So that's awesome. I think it's much better than it was before. That's our rear seat belt installation. The other side is just like that. So I won't bore you with that. Next, I think I want to tackle these speakers that are here on each side. They're, they look terrible. They've got uh, either rust or something brown on the grill. I can't figure out what's going on with them. But I do have another set of speakers, and if I can't get those to fit properly, then I'll probably just deal with these grills. But all right, let's go ahead and take these big quarter panels off the side and get to our speakers. There we go. Okay, this is the back side of our panel and our crappy speaker that's in here. Obviously not the right speaker and they drilled right through the panel. Very nice. Yeah, did a nice job on that. Looks great. Always a mystery on these things. So on this particular speaker, the grill part, it, the actual metal metal grill part comes out. Not this base all the way around. Sort of. Come on out. There we go. Yeah, these have kind of seen better days, huh? Look at that big old scratch on there. It looks 
It looks pretty bad, huh? So we might end up just painting these and putting them back on. The speakers do work fine. Surrounds look like they're okay. And I think my other speakers are too big, but let me go get one and we'll see. And this is what I have for a possible replacement. They're kind of big and beefy and heavy and not really the best quality either of these things, but I think I pulled these out of the Ferrari, I think is where they came out of. They, oh, they just screwed them into the door panel. Oh my God. So if you're ever installing a car stereo, please don't just destroy the door panel putting these things in. It was just horrible. I had to rebuild all of the leather grill on that thing because of these stupid things. But I always hold on to the old parts, so I've got it. And I think they're too big, actually. I think they're just gonna be a bit wide. And I don't think they're really gonna fit. Even with the speaker completely disassembled, it's not actually, the speaker isn't that much bigger but the ring that it sits on actually is, it's pretty big. And this speaker is oversized as it is. So I think because of that, I'm just gonna go ahead and repaint these things because I don't know, it'd just be a lot easier. These speakers are fine. They sound fine, work fine. And another thing is, take a look at the magnet on the back of this guy. It's pretty darn big, which means it's pretty heavy, which means it's gonna pull on this panel quite a bit over time. And I don't know, the sound system is a cabriolet and it's a Porsche. I'm not gonna put a huge big sound system in a car like this, it's kind of silly. The car's awfully noisy as it is. I think this will be fine. Let me go ahead and paint these grills and we'll go ahead and put them right back on. I have my grills painted and they look a million times better. They don't have those scratches in them anymore. And they're a nice sort of semi-gloss, which I think was perfect for this. But since we have this panel off, we now have the seat belt exposed. And these seat belts are original and this bit up here is kind of cracked. The webbing is very old, they're dirty. You know, I mean, they work, they seem to work just fine. They're just kind of old, a little tattered looking and stuff as well. This part looks terrible and the webbing actually has here has some nicks in it as well. And it's a little bit of braided. You know, this is an older car from 1986. So while we're here, probably not a bad idea to upgrade the safety equipment. And this is probably one of the more important pieces of safety equipment on the car. So, all right, let me go ahead and pull these things out. Should just take a minute. I was gonna send these seat belts off to get them repaired or refurbished, but then I remembered I have a full set of seat belts from Chad's car as well, and they were in beautiful shape. So off camera, I went ahead and reinstalled them, so seat belts are all sorted. Then lastly, it was just a matter of putting that panel back on and popping in our new speaker grill. The other side is exactly the same, so I won't bore you with that. Well, we're making pretty good progress on the car. Next thing I wanna to get to is this threshold and this gasket here. Boy, look at this thing. It looked like a mouse chewed through it. I think what actually happened was it probably got stuck to the bottom of the door at some point. Maybe it got hot or who knows. But anyway, just ripped it right apart and it's all deteriorated and just horrible. I also want to take a look at this actual threshold plate as well. It's kind of bent in a few places and a little weird. Not sure we can do much about it, but mm. also, the screws that are holding this down are super rusty and they look awful. So I was able to source these. These are the replacement for these screws, but they're very expensive and you can get them from Auto House AZ, but they're just very, very expensive screws. I'm not sure exactly why. All right, let's go ahead and remove our threshold, pull all the screws out and see what we can do about swapping out this gasket. We better make sure that our replacement gasket is long enough. I think it is, but we better make sure. Lay this along here like that. Along here. Make sure this is long enough. Yep. It looks like it's gonna be long enough, but, but only just. So I think we're good. Take a look at the profile on that. It's not symmetric. So that's not the same as that. There's a lot of dirt down here in this groove here. So let me go ahead and clean that out completely. And since it's brand new rubber, I'm gonna throw a little 303 on it. I think that'll help. 
I worked with the threshold strip a little bit. It's super soft and you have to be really, really careful with it. So I pushed, these things were kind of pushed down a little bit because the screws had been pulling them down. So I pushed them up a little bit. And any, there were a couple of small dents which I kind of got partially out. Not a lot I could do, but looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and reinstall it with our new screws. All right, there's our new threshold gasket in. And I have the threshold reinstalled with the new black screws. Looks pretty good. It's not exactly perfect, but it looks pretty good, I think. Certainly a lot better than it was. And with the new gasket, it should seal a little bit better as well. And there we go. All right, well, I have to do the other side as well. I'm not gonna bore you with that. And then after that, I'm gonna get to the center console. Well, the center console was a bit more work than I anticipated. They're always a little cantankerous to get in, and we did have the new carpet, so I had to find some holes for those screws. But boy, just getting the wiring in the back of it and back and forth, it is a bit fussy. But in the end, finally got the center console in, and I think it looks great. This center console, what a fuss. There's just so many wires in the back of this thing. They're just so hard to get under this cover. My oh my, okay, I think I have it in. I'm going to test one more time and see if all the switches and buttons and knobs and stuff are still working. So, all right, let's give it a try. All right, how about the AC? Yay, that's working. How about our hazards? Good. And that's important because if these don't work, then the turn signals won't work. And they're working. Yay. All right, like I said, I'm kind of hoping, oh, look at that. There it goes, it's lit up. Great. All right, so that's working, that's working. All right. Now our stereo. I'll let you know because I can't play it because of copyright issues, but I'll see if it works. Power. And the last thing I wanted to tackle were the newly recovered front seats. The first thing I did was take a little bit of the 303 plastic protectant and hit all the plastic parts, the release for the seat and the side covers and seat belts and such. When we picked up the seats from Juan, he said that he felt the leather was a bit dry, so he sent us home with some race glaze. Now, I'd never seen this before. It's the leather treatment that he swears by. It's got pretty good reviews, and I thought I would give it a try. So I will let you know in the next video coming up, which is a detailing video, just what I think of this race glaze. I've been looking all over for a really good leather conditioner. And finally, it's just a matter of reinstalling the seats. I did go ahead and get new hardware for the seats because the old ones were pretty chewed up. But other than that, it's just a kind of a standard install, four bolts, one in each corner, nothing really special about that. All right, well, that's the last bits for the interior. The last little bits were a huge amount of work, but we got them in. We got the driver's seat in. I still have to put the passenger seat in, but I don't want to bore you with that. It's just putting a seat in. In the next episode, we're going to go through in detail the entire car. I'm going to give you a really good look at just how well everything turned out. It's pretty awesome. All right, well, thank you so, so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now, because you're not gonna wanna miss any of this content, and then we're moving to the Ferrari after this, so it's gonna be pretty awesome. Okay, well, thank you so, so much for watching, and as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels, bye.